Hello, brothers and sisters. So um, before I start speaking, I just want you to let you know that I do have a cold. So if I stumble a little bit upon my words, it's because I'm, I'm a bit stuffy. But I just want to reveal this to you, that God has given us everything to live a godly life. And he does not want you to perish. He does not wish anyone to perish. He wish everyone to come into the likeness of his son. But in order for you to come into the likeness of his son, you have to know the son first. You have to know what the son is about. And this is kind of like what I want to get to. Are you about your own business or are you about the kingdom business? Because the son, who is Jesus, was about the business of the kingdom of God. He was about his father's business. So if you're not about God's business, then you're about your own business. Now, some people say, well, I work in the church and I do this. I'm on the worship team and, you know, I clean the church and I do this for the pastor. Saying, well, you have to truly understand, did God himself in your relationship with God, did God himself tell you to do that? Or did the pastor tell you to do that? Some people see their pastor as God without actually calling their pastor God. And you want to know how? And I said this on a Facebook post. People see People come into the church and they act all kind. They act all nice and gentle and stuff like that. And then they go out of the church and they act wicked. They use a bunch of foul language. They encourage or endorse weed. They even get mad when people say, well, Jesus can bring you the healing. You don't need that weed to get your healing. People get upset. And so they live like the world. They walk like the world. They talk like the world when they go out into the world. But when they come to church... Then they try to be godly, a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. You know, you can truly tell if someone is accepting the power of God to change their lives or if they're rejecting the power of God because there's no change. You can truly tell. Now, some people are going to say, well, you're judging people. The power of God created all of the universe. But for some reason, you believe that the power of God can't change your thinking, can't change your heart. You believe that the power of God can make black holes and make the whole solar system and everything within it, everything so powerful, volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, just everything, everything. But yet you believe that God can't change the thinking of a man. Hmm. This proves that your imagination is actually taking over. That lie is actually taking over instead of the truth taking over. If you truly had a relationship with God, and if you truly trusted God, then you would allow God, you would accept the spirit of God. You would say, Lord, just access. You have access to my soul. You have access to my life. You have access to my children. You have access. Instead of going to church and then being there for 90 minutes, acting kind and nice for 90 minutes, and then you go home and you act whatever, however you want to act. If you refuse to allow God to change you, then what makes you think you're going to change when you're before his throne? What makes you think you're going to change when you come before him and you're saying, Lord, please show me mercy. Please show me grace. The Lord is going to say, I showed you mercy. I showed you grace all on earth for those years and decades. But yet you didn't change. That grace and that mercy was given to you. That compassion was given to you so that you can change. I sent my Holy Spirit to you. I sent people to you that were filled with the Holy Spirit, that were filled with a prophet, with a prophet's words, the words of my words from the throne. They were my messages. They went straight to you. But yet you didn't believe them because you don't believe the Spirit of God. If you can't believe the prophets that speak over you, that speak about the power that God can do in you, then, then there's not going to be any change. You're not going to accept the Spirit of God. Now, some people, I'm going to say this, some people say they have faith in Jesus, but you don't see their faith. You don't see it. Now, some people say, well, why are you exposing people? Why are you making people look bad? I'm making their behavior look bad. I'm making their ways look bad. Because they need to turn from their ways. They need to turn from themselves. They need to deny themselves. Stop playing these games. You can't, oh my goodness, you can't say that you're greater than Jesus. You can't say in your own mind and in your own heart, oh, I don't need Jesus all the time. I'm, I'm righteous before the pastor because I asked the pastor questions. Oh, I'm righteous before. Hmm. 
the congregation of the church because the congregation of the church think I'm nice and think I'm, I'm, I'm joyful and think that nothing, nothing's wrong with me. Let me tell you something. If you feel that there's nothing wrong with you, then you're calling God a liar. We all, we all fall short of the righteousness of God. We all fall short of perfection in the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit wants to live in you. He wants to set you upon perfection. The Holy Spirit wants to live in you. And the only way that you can reach the kingdom of God is by allowing God to do his work in you. In you. you. There's nothing that you can do for God by yourself. You need to allow the Holy Spirit in you so that he can work in you. And then so that you can work for God. It's like a recycling thing. God sends his spirit in you. Then the Holy Spirit starts working on you about what you should do and how you should do it and when you should do it. That's how it is. It's not you working for the church all alone and saying, I'm doing a good work for God. There's nothing that you can do as far as a good work for God. You need the Holy Spirit. You know, worshiping and praising in church, that's not always receiving the Holy Spirit. How about you receive the Holy Spirit in your home? How about you receive the Holy Spirit when you go to work? How about you receive the Holy Spirit when you wake up in the morning? How about you receive the Holy Spirit when you're watching TV so you know what to watch and what not to watch? Because the Holy Spirit is directing you. How about that? Instead of just, well, you know, the pastor sees I'm a good person and the church sees I'm a good person. So therefore, I must be living in the Holy Spirit. When you start revealing sin to people, not to people, but when you start revealing sin to God, when you start getting on your face and on your knees to God and start repenting of your sins and start revealing that something's wrong with your life or a lot of things are wrong with your life or a lot of things have gone wrong in your life as far as your youth, then God would do something about that. God would do something about the sins that you have been carrying, that burden that you have been carrying, that pain that you have been carrying all that time. He would do something about it because you have a village to him. But if you keep hiding it, if you keep saying that there's nothing wrong, if you keep saying, oh, well, the pastor sees I'm, sees I'm good enough. But the question is, does God see you as revealing your sins to him, revealing your sins to God? If you're not revealing anything to God, then you're saying that I'm perfect the way that I am. It's just who I am. God will accept me today. You have to understand that when you come into a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, he is trying to tell you something about the kingdom. And when you read your Bible, you should see things from a very spiritual aspect. Right? You're not going to understand it in a, in a year or five years, but you're going to understand a lot of it in a decade. You're going to understand a lot of it in 15 years. You just can't give yourself to God or to God's words for a year and expect there to be a dramatic change in you. And you expect, well, I'm good enough for God after reading the Bible for one year or two years. That's not the way that it works. You need to give your life to God, not a couple years to God. You need to give your life to God, give your family to God. Because God is trying to stop those family curses from going from generation to generation. He's trying to stop it. See, this is why we need to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father instead of having a relationship with the pastor even more. And it's okay to see, you know, let me, let me just say this. You just see your pastor and your ministry leaders and your congregation as all brothers and sisters in Christ instead of seeing them as just leaders. All right? You can go ahead and see them as a leader of a ministry all you want to, but <laughs> do you just see them as leading you? And if they're leading you, don't they have flaws? Don't they have problems of their own? Yes, they do. They just don't show in the church. The pastor may have an issue with their, with their family at home. Their pastor may have some bitterness. Their pastor, your pastor may have issues with money or finances. But yet, they don't show it in church. They may give a, give a little tiny hint of, you know, I had some trouble or something like that. But they're not going to reveal the whole picture to you. You see, your pastor is not perfect. None of us are perfect. That's why we need to go to the one that is perfect. We need to go to the Spirit of God. We need to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus lived and walked in perfection. We are to walk in his ways, not walk in our own ways. Your pastor is less than Jesus Christ. Jesus came straight from the kingdom of God, not your pastor. And even me, myself, don't believe me. Believe the Spirit of God. Go to the Spirit of God. Go to Him. Get on your face and get on your knees to God. 
That's all there is to it. And I guarantee you, you'll see a significant change. You bring your sins. You bring all your evil. You bring what doesn't feel right in you. You, you bring all that to him. And you get on your, your, your face and your knees to God. And I guarantee you, there'll be a significant change. You'll go down one way and then you'll come up feeling another way. But some people don't like that. Some people hate submission. Some people, they submit in front of the church. They submit in front of the pastor instead of submitting to God in their own home. Because they don't bring God into their home. They don't allow Jesus in their home. If you can't get on your face and on your knees to God in your own home. And I'm not talking about worship music and praise music. I'm talking about just all alone, just you and God. If you can't get before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in your own home and reveal that there's something wrong, then it just proves that Jesus is not in your home. Jesus, oh, the words of Jesus may be in a Bible on your bookshelf, but it's the spirit of God in your home. It's the spirit of God within you. That's the question. We need to stop playing these games. The time, time is almost up. Time is almost up. And we think that we got decades. I tell you what, man. I think we only got a few years. You can prove me wrong all you want to, but let's just say we got 20 years left. How do you know you're not going to die tomorrow? How do you know you're not going to die in the next two years? What if you only got two years left? Isn't it time to get right with God? How do you know that you're not going to receive a tumor and and, and God's, God's going to say, okay, time is up. And you're praying and you're praying and you're praying. And God's like, wait a minute. Now you're praying now. Now you're praying to me to, to heal you of your tumor. Now you're praying to me to heal you of your stroke. Now you're praying to me to heal you of your, of your heart issues and, and, and your heart attack. Now you're, now you're praying to me now. What happened to those last two decades that I tried my best to reveal myself to you, that I tried to reveal my son to you? What happened to that? Now all of a sudden you're praying to me? And asking me to heal you? So what? So that you can live more in sin? Haven't you seen all the signs and the miracles that I have given you over the last two decades? But now you're praying towards me and, and asking me for a healing? But yet you didn't want to transform even though you saw the signs, the miracles. You saw the wonders. You saw the power of God within you and before you and in other people that you know. But yet you don't want to change into my son. We got to get back into reality. The internet is everywhere. And we believe anything that is on the internet is true. But I tell you what, you want to see the power of God? Go ahead and look outside. Look at the sky. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at all of the solar system outside. Look at the, the way the trees grow. Look at leaves. Breathe in the air. All that belongs to God. And without that, we would die. Without the solar system rotating the way that it is, it would be total destruction. If, if it was up to our idea on how to make the universe and how the universe rotates and stuff like that, I guarantee you, this universe, this universe and this solar system would be in total chaos. If it was up to man, if it was up to man, to make the color of the sky, it would be like weird rainbow colors and just black and it's just weirdness. We can't allow our own imagination to be our life. There's only one. Who wants to be part of your life. There's only one who wants you to come back to him. So I created your soul. I created your body. So just come back to me. Don't you notice the air that I'm giving you? Don't you notice the mercy I'm giving you? How much mercy do I have to give you? How much grace do I have to give you to get you to notice me? Get you to acknowledge my power, my glory? What do I have to do? Do I have to send my only one and only son? Oh, I already did. Do I have to send my prophets? I already sent the prophets. Do I have to send more prophets to you that are here right here right now? I'm sending them to you, but you don't want to listen to them. How many people have to come before your face and say, listen, God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. You don't have to go around in this cycle of, of death, this cycle of death, 
and you're just saying that this is my life. You don't have to go into the cycle that you got from your youth saying, oh, yeah, this uh, degrading oneself or my parents degrading me is part of my life and saying I'm a I'm a lost cause and I should commit suicide and so on and so forth. I'm a drunk. I'm a drug addict. I'm always angry. I'm always rageful. You don't have to live that cycle anymore. God has given you a body and a soul. Now it's time for you to receive your actual life. What life actually feels like from the Spirit of God, from the one who gave you life. I think that's all I got to say, guys. It's time. It's time to give up on yourself and let God take over. It's time. It's time to give up on your ways, on your ideas, and it's time for God to take over. You relied on his air. You relied on his 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 sun, the sun, the moon. You rely on all things, but can you rely on his spirit? His very spirit. The very spirit that created all things that you live off of right now. Do you want to rely on it? And not just rely on getting a job and rely on getting a, a car or a truck, but rely on being a peacemaker. Rely on being a prophet, prophesying. Over people revealing what actual life in the kingdom of God actually looks like, what it feels like, what God actually speaks like. That's all I gotta say, guys. Just wanna say I love you. I love you. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>